When linking to materials in Blackboard, you want to make sure you're using the most stable link possible. For library resources, this is pretty simple, as most vendors provide a permalink option on the page you're using, as does the library's catalog, which will link the student to the catalog entry directly. Here are a few examples of what permalinks look like in various databases. In a ProQuest database, you can use the Cite button to find a permanent link, which you can identify by the fact that it has the Hodges name in the stanza. Sometimes there will be a DOI, in which case you'll have to go into the Abstract Details tab and go down until you find the permanent link. For Gale, once again you'll have to go into the Citation Tools and use the link in there. EBSCO probably has the nicest interface right now with a handy permalink button on the right side. Credo Reference is unique in that any page can generate a permalink. Simply click on the link icon at the top of any page you're at, and you'll have a permanent stable link. So, some other issues to consider. If you worry about broken links or speed of access within a resource, you have some options within copyright to make a PDF for your course for academic journals that we currently subscribe to. If you find an article openly available in an institutional repository that does not have a Creative Commons license prominently displayed, use a link rather than a PDF. While it may be open for access, it doesn't mean that you have the right to make a copy. For ebooks and videos, you should always create a permalink by default. If you have any copyright concerns or feel that you need to make a copy of a resource that isn't an academic journal we subscribe to, always feel free to contact the library. For web pages, things get messy fast. My preferred method of creating permanent links to web content is to take the site I'm looking at and see if a copy has been made in the Internet Archive. Then I'll use that item. If the Internet Archive does not have the item, you can try submitting it at archive.org web. At the bottom right, you'll see Save Page Now. Post the page you're wanting to save and click Save Page. If the Internet Archive can make a copy of that web page, it'll start building it automatically for you. Once it's done and you're sure that the content has been properly captured, now you can take the Web Archive link at the top and use that as your permanent link. So for an example, that's what that link will always send the student to. If that doesn't work, for instance, if Internet Archive can't make a copy of the website because of the rules set by the website, you can try perma.cc. You can sign up to create a perma.cc account, which will give you 10 permanent link citations per month. To give you an idea of what that looks like, I'm just going to use that same article again. Hopefully that will be enough between the Internet Archive and perma.cc to cover any web content in your course. Creating a PDF of a website by printing the page to PDF might be a copyright violation not covered by fair use, and so to be extra careful, I would recommend against this. As always, if you have any copyright concerns or questions about web archiving or anything I've gone over here, always feel free to contact us. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. It lets us know that we're growing an audience and will allow us to continue making more material for you. If you'd like to contact us to learn more about Hodges University and our library, visit us at the link in the top right.